All right, Red Nation, today we're going to be talking about the spatial resolution, namely the high contrast spatial resolution in your X-ray imaging system coming up right here at How Radiology Works. What does spatial resolution actually tell you about the imaging system? It tells you your ability to actually differentiate structures, especially small structures. One thing that we can do is look at these two objects. On a system that has high spatial resolution, you can see these two objects, you can see the edges of these two objects very clearly. When they're relatively far apart, you can differentiate these two objects separately. You can also differentiate these two objects separately, even if it's a lower spatial resolution system. If you look at the edges, they're relatively blurred here on this lower spatial resolution system. But because they're relatively far apart, you can differentiate them still. But what happens if you bring them relatively close together? When you bring them relatively close together, there starts to be actually an overlap between those two kind of point clouds. And now you can't actually differentiate them. It looks just like one structure. That's what happens when you have a lower space resolution. If you have a higher space resolution, Again, these two objects are the same distance apart. I can differentiate them right here on the high space resolution. I cannot on the low space resolution. Okay, but stop showing me just circles. Show me something that looks like what I'm used to seeing. Here are actual images of a radiograph of a couple digits here. You can see the actual joints going from high space resolution to a moderate to a low spatial resolution, you can see the structures start to become more blurred, more difficult to actually appreciate small, fine structures when you start to lose spatial resolution. This is why having high contrast spatial resolution is very important, especially for your high contrast tasks, such as your imaging of bones on your X-ray systems. You know, what I think at least is a fun way to talk about the actual things on the system that will degrade your space resolution. Imagine our patient is the letter X and she comes into the room. Letter X is looking for an exam, wants a little peace of mind. The doctor says, yeah, I think we should prescribe some radiographs for the letter X. As the letter X comes in to the exam room, we do an actual x-ray exam. It's going to look something like this, right? We have a focal spot right here. The letter X is going to be standing up right here. And then our image that's going to be on the image receptor is going to be down here. And what we're showing first is actually the contribution due to the focal spot blurring. We call this geometric unsharpness. U for unsharpness is used a lot of times. Imagine you have a point for a focal spot. That's the best scenario. And then if the focal spot gets a little larger and larger still, there starts to become more blurring at the edges of the actual image. And this effect is actually dependent on both the size of the focal spot. You can see as the focal spot gets larger, that blurring is going to get larger. It's also going to be dependent on the actual position. If the object is moved closer to the image receptor and the general geometry is staying the same, but the object is just moving closer to the image receptor, then you see how the x-rays are kind of spreading out here. And we're looking at how the edges of this object are imaged. As the object were to move closer to the image receptor, there will actually be less distance for those x-rays to spread out as they leave the edge. We can see what that looks like here. If you look at F is the size of the focal spot, and then U is our geometric unsharpness, that distance right there is the distance over which there's blurring due to the focal spot. Then you have your object here in the middle, and so you can see, like we talked about, the focal spot as it gets larger, that is directly going to lead to this unsharpness getting larger. There's also a term that is 
essentially having to do with the geometric magnification here. Right here we have the source to object distance and we have the object to image distance. The unsharpness is actually just the relative size of the focal spot times the object to image distance divided by the source to object distance. This is one reason why for a chest radiograph, we want to do it right up by the image receptor. This is actually going to minimize the blurring due to the focal spot or the geometric unsharpness. One tool that's used to actually quantify this for the focal spot is actually a star pattern. If you think about these radial lines, they're all going through the center of this object here. And if you can image this, especially if you can image it on film, for instance, which has a relatively high space resolution, especially if you do it directly on the film itself. Again, you wouldn't image the patient in that mode because it's not dose efficient. But if you image the focal spot and you actually look for where you can no longer see individual separate spokes, that means now the two objects, namely the, those two spokes that are right next to another, you're going from being able to distinguish them to not being able to distinguish them right at that border there. That's what we would call that limiting space resolution. And right in the middle, there's actually going to be gradations or numbers written down on this test pattern that you can see once you get to a certain point, this is actually going to be the limiting space resolution. And then you would actually document that after you make these measurements on your system. Next, I want to talk about the resolution effect due to the image receptor. If you have a CR system or you have a DR system, they will each have different means which actually limit the space resolution. On CR, it's actually the resolution on the readout side again, you have your latent image, which is formed on a CR system. And as that is read out, the laser is being shined on the actual cassette. The visible light is coming out and the actual resolution has to do with our ability to read out that visible light. Then on a DR system, we aren't doing that step of taking a latent image and generating visible light. We're actually using the direct imaging system. There's actually going to be a scintillator. Visible photons are typically going to be generated unless you're talking about a solid state type material where you could be using a flat panel and going directly from x-rays to the actual electrons themselves. In any of these scenarios, actually the smaller the detector elements or the DELs, that's going to lead to less blurring of your image. Relatively high resolution images shown here, namely well sampled on the detector side. A moderate sampling is shown here and a lower sampling is shown here. As you have larger detector elements, you're decreasing the sampling and thus you're not able to capture as high resolution structures in your image. Typically, Again, those new direct flat panels that are made for mammography, for instance, have the ability to capture the highest space resolution because there's the least amount of blurring there. Another thing in between our focal spot and our detector is actually the object itself. And when there is motion within the object, that can lead to blurring as well. This is different from the other two in that the focal spot and detector, they affect the whole image and they affect it uniformly. Motion, sometimes you won't have any motion. And sometimes when you do have motion, the effect is actually different for different parts of the image. If you look again at your X, if you have a nice stationary X, it'll look like this. But if the X is actually moving along an angle, imagine the X is moving along this direction right here. What's going to happen if it moves during the acquisition is this actually gets blurred. These edges right here are actually getting blurred because they were moving during the acquisition. However, you can see this edge right here is not blurred. It actually has to do with 
the direction of the motion. And that's why motion is actually one of the trickier things to actually spot and to deal with. But it's very important as a radiologic technologist that you understand the impact of each of these factors on your resolution and your x-ray images. And since you understand all these factors, it's great that you're going to be able to go into the clinic, use them well. But one thing if you don't understand is how are you going to quantify this resolution? That's where the modulation transfer function comes in. Make sure and see our video next on the modulation transfer function and how we can actually measure the space resolution in our images. Coming up next.